Hey, this is Angie Brown. In this follow along, I want to take a look at installing GitHub Desktop and see what we can do with it. So what I'm going to do is open up a new tab and just type in GitHub Desktop and we'll find our way over there. So here it is uh, at desktop.github.com and we can go ahead and proceed to install this. So I'm on Windows right now, so I'm going to go ahead and just download that. Okay. All right, and so that's finished downloading. Let's go ahead and install it. So it should be pretty straightforward. Going to double click the executable. If you're on a Mac, of course, you drag it into your applications. For Linux, I have no idea, but I imagine it's not too hard to install. And I'm just waiting for it to um, pro uh, uh, pop up here and proceed with installation. So you can see my computer is thinking. There we go. It's starting to open up. All right, so we'll wait for that to finish its install. There we go, it looks like it's installed. We can log in either into github.com or GitHub Enterprises. Let's go ahead and uh, log into github.com. You can see we can sign into uh, either or. I think I'm interested right now in this repo here. So I'm gonna select this one and we'll go ahead and authorize it. Um, and it says, when your phone is ready, click the button below. So I'm gonna use GitHub Mobile to confirm because we have UFA, so just give me a moment. And while I'm waiting here, I guess I have to press the button. I wasn't doing that. And so it pops up with 14 and um, I have a pseudo request. And so I'll just share my screen here for just a moment. But what it's showing me here is I have to enter those two digits in. So that's what I mean where sometimes it, it uh, pops up or other times it's just confirmation. It's gonna really depend on the action that's being performed. Let's go ahead and open this up in GitHub Desktop. And we can see that it's setting our name and email. So it's like it's con it is configuring Git underneath. Um, so that is interesting there. We'll go ahead and uh, click Finish. And I mean, we got tutorials and other stuff here, but I'm not really interested in that. I just want to open up the repo that we already have. So let's go ahead and open that up. And I guess we're cloning it. And it's actually showing us that we're going to clone it in a specific location. Here it's putting in documents, GitHub. I guess that's fine. Uh, we go over to GitHub, your uh, github.com. I suppose we can just select the repo and it'll put the path there. So there's two different ways that we can do it here. I'm not sure which way is better, but I'll go ahead and do uh, this method here because it just seemed a little bit simpler. And so now we have our repo pulled up. And so we can perform stuff here. Um, so you uh, you have changes on this branch. Would you like, what would you like to do with them? Uh, to contribute them to the parent project? Um, I, I don't know. I just <laughs> I just opened it up. Why am I already getting asked questions? You have changes on this branch. Would you, what would you like to do with them? To contribute to the parent project for my own purposes. This will help you contribute to this repo. I guess the top one, maybe it's just trying to, tell me what I want to do or not do. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but now we have this opened. And so the idea is that if we make changes, we can do something in here. It looks like we can also open up our repo directly here in Visual Studio Code. So I can go ahead and click this. I guess the nice part of this is that I don't need to have any compute attached um, in order to uh, work with this. So normally you'd have to have uh, get installed here and just say, I accept this. And so we could go in here. I'll go into our crash course here. I'll just add another exclamation mark if it ever lets me here, good. I'll just say save. And I'll go back over to here and it shows that we have a change. Uh, let's take a look at history. So we have um, history over time. I would really prefer a graph. I'm not sure if they actually have like a graph mode in here. So this isn't like super useful. A lot of other uh, Git programs, like there's one called Kraken, like Git Kraken. Um, they say it's a legendary tool. I think it's a little bit heavy, but the point is, is that they will have a, a much better visualization in terms of what is going on. So, you know, this tool is okay, but it's not the best tool. You can create, uh, you can push, pull, fetch. You can view stuff here. You can open up the command prompt. Um, so there are some things you can do. You can do stuff with branches, um, but it's really up to what workflow you're working in because of course, you know, if you're already using Visual Studio Code, you don't really need this tool because we can do, uh, everything and much more here. And then there's also a GitHub plugin that we can utilize. So, um, you know, GitHub Desktop existed before uh, Visual Studio Code and before the Visual Studio Code extension. So, um, you know, it's there. And, you know, maybe if you're using a different editor or some, or maybe you couldn't install the extension or something like that, there'd be a use case for GitHub Desktop. Again, it's not bad, but, um, you know, it is it is what it is. Uh, it is very good at keeping uh, your repos in a particular location and managing managing them. So that is really good there. But again, why they haven't added a visualization, I have no idea. But there you go. That is GitHub Desktop. Um, 
as far as as much as we want to cover it here and we'll see you the next one ciao